So, I finally finished Bakugan Battle Brawlers, and by that I mean Season 1 all the way to Season 4. Finally finished it. Um, we have a lot of new people recently on the channel, um, so welcome. Hi everyone, my name's Jesse, and I do Bakugan videos, basically. I guess YouTube really liked the, uh, the, the Marucho video I made, so if you haven't seen it for some reason, go ahead and watch it. I also have a playlist of very similar videos. I think I have every attribute now, but Chaos, Chaos is coming out soon. Um, so yeah, uh, if you haven't seen those, go ahead and check them out. Also, quickly, I do buy and sell Bakugan. If you're interested, you can check out those links in the description below, um, eBay or Mercari, whatever your preference is. By the way, there will be spoilers for all seasons of the Legacy Bakugan series, so if you don't want to be spoiled, click away from the video now. So for this video, I want to talk about my thoughts, experiences, and, and just a general like vlog style conversation about the seasons one through four of Bakugan. So um, this is going to be cut up into like two halves, I guess, for the conversation. First half is season one, Bakugan Battle Brawlers, and season two, New Vistroya. Then we'll go to Gundalian Invaders, and then of course, Mectanium Surge. So overall, like seasons one and two for me, perfect. Um, I may not remember everything perfectly because I watched them about a year ago, but season one, I think like most people, everyone can agree, it's pretty solid. It's pretty perfect. Um, the aspects they use, the Bakugan are cool. I like the game aspect of it a lot. I think that that's really what got a lot of people interested because they can go and play the game, right? Really cool, really good story. Obviously, Hydranoid was a good villain. Um, and just some overall really awesome characters. It had a good plot twist at the end. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it, it showed that Drago was super powerful. He got the Infinity Core and, and all that. He defeated Naga. It was, it was a solid season, and I don't have much else to say on it. There weren't too many flaws in it. I think in some places it got very repetitive, um, particularly just dragging battles out across episodes was a bit too much, I think, but overall it got us there like i remember watching it and struggling to get through the middle half of it but then once it got to the end solid for the second season i thought it was you know as good as it could be for a sequel uh the story got more developed and then of course we find uh helios which is really awesome we get some old favorites back like preyas but we also lose a lot we also lose some characters um so we get Mira instead of, you know, Julie. They're gone now, so we lose some characters uh, in place of new ones, which isn't necessarily bad. I think it's, you know, unique, and it introduces new characters, which is good because the toy line for New Vistroya, in my opinion, it's, it's the best. It's pretty good. Um, and so... I think on that front, they did a really good job. They introduced the spinning Bakugan. You have some more gimmicks like the turbines and um, all that good stuff. We have traps now, which eh, I'm a little on the fence about, but they're not bad. Um, and then, you know, they updated the game a little bit, new rules and all that. So it was good. Storyline wise, awesome. Uh, Helios had like the best character arc ever. So really happy about that. I think at this point, though, they switched over from having, you know, like a team of Bakugan, like you're playing the game to just one, which I think is where it starts losing me because I liked having like three Bakugan that were unique and you had to fight with. Now it's just like, oh, let's just use our main character Bakugan, which eh, it's, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's also, I get it. And they use that for the rest of the shows, right? And so... Gundalian Invaders. So I took a break when I remember watching it. I took a break. So after New Vistroya, I was unsure if I was going to keep collecting the other seasons. Like I was like, I don't know if I want Gundalian Invaders. I don't really like any of the Bakugan in it. And Mectanium Surge Bakugan are just straight up expensive. And so I heard good and bad things about Mectanium Surge. I've only heard bad things about Gundalian Invaders. So I was unsure. So I took a break. Um, and then finally, you guys were telling me to just watch it, and I felt like I needed to watch it because you can't have a Bakugan channel like this and not watch every season. So, I finally did it, and um, Gundalian Invaders, yeah, it was rough. I tweeted out this uh, picture of, like, I just finished Gundalian Invaders, and um, it kind of sums up my experience with it. Gundalian Invaders was repetitive and boring. 
the characters weren't that great. Um, Aquamos got on my nerves a lot. Um, you know, having only Derek and Dragonoid evolve was, you know, it was it was just kind of weird. I guess it was different. It was fresh in some ways, but it was a little bit off the rails. I guess um, the battle gear, they just they just it started getting too mechanical, and that's where it starts losing me. You go from season one with these organic like dragons and monsters and all that to start starting to have like cyborgs like not even helios like helios was cool and it worked for him but it does not work for every other character and like when you throw on the battle gear to give them weapons i just don't think that worked and then they look like the characters like the the toys look flat without their battle gear so it's like you have to have it and it's a sales tactic i get that but it just didn't work for me i didn't like it um like I said, it was repetitive. It was just battle after battle after battle after battle. And then there were just so many characters. Like, I cannot tell you all of the different Gundalian and Bakugan that were, all, like, they were fighting. I couldn't tell you. Uh, it was There were too many. And so that was a big problem. The end of it, like, the fight with Derek at the very end was good. And we finally got that lore between Derek and Drago. And it was nice. Like, that actually tied it together pretty well. Um, and so I'm, I'm okay with that, but it was just, oh, it was rough. It took me, I remember I watched the first half of it, took like a two month break and then finally came back to it. It was just, it was hard to get through. So now we go on to Mctanium Surge, which I like literally just finished an hour ago. First arc, amazing. Second arc, eh, not that great. So the first arc I really liked, uh, you got a lot of story with Drago you saw a lot of his character development. I liked his struggle with um, his new powers. That was really awesome. The character's amazing. I feel like the Baku Nano was a good upgrade from the Battle Gear because it's like optional. And just that whole character development, I thought that Tristar was a great comic relief character compared to Aquamos. It was good. And then you go on to Mctanium Surge where it's pretty repetitive. The villain was not that great. Like compared to um compared to Raisinoid, like Mactavius Destroyer is just not good. And again, the Nonets, there's so many of them, I can only name like a few of them. And I just think there's so many that it confuses the audience. Um I like that they brought back old characters, like they brought back in Runo. I love that. Uh and I even like that she got to brawl, uh, at least that one episode, and then you know throwing Mira back in just to show that these people met and they're not just like they're gone after that season they do come back um it was nice that they did like a, a little glimpse into like what Nuva Stroya life is with Preus and Tigrera you even see Elfin and Hydranoid in there a little bit so that was really awesome um but then the end it's just like Mc Dragonoid Destroyer destroys Mctavius Destroyer and it's like you don't even know if he's fully destroyed you just see like blinding light because Dragonoid Destroyer gets so strong and then after that, it's just like Dan, Dan, Dan and Drago just sail away. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the heck? They literally get in a sailboat. I don't even know if they have supplies or anything. They just get in a sailboat and leave. Like, does he say bye to his mom? Does he say like, bye mom, I'm sailing away? He just goes and like his friends are waiting on him. He doesn't tell anyone. He, him and Drago just get in the sailboat and go away. What the heck? So yeah. Um, I think that sums up the second arc very well. There's a lot of fighting and explosions, and then they leave. Literally defeats Mctavius Destroyer. That's it. Him, Drago, and like the original Dragonoid have a conversation, and Dan sails away. That's it. Um, and like the Mectagons, they're not, they're not that cool. Uh, like I say, things just start getting too mechanical, and that's when it ruins it. So, like, after, when once Season 2 ends, and you go to Gundalian Invaders, all the tech and robot stuff ruin it, I think, in my opinion. And so, that's kind of where I stand on it. Season 1 and 2, amazing, and I highly recommend collecting the characters from those seasons. Mectanium Surge has some very good characters and worth collecting, but they're very expensive and very hard to find. Because that's when people started teetering off, because Gundalian Invaders was just bad. And so, those are my thoughts on 
Bakugan Battle Brawlers, Seasons 1 through 4, Legacy Series. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe for more awesome content. My name's Jesse. See you in the next video. Peace out.